Hey, this is Cash Flow, and you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13, to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits, and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to Live and in Color with Wolfie D and my man Jimmy across the street. What's up? Not much, brother. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Uh, Did you watch any of uh, the pay-per-view payback? I did not, man. I'm just, I'll be honest. I kind of stick to the big four, you know, almost the little ones. I don't always watch as much unless there's a great match on it or something. Yeah, I just heard about the girls' cage match being uh, the match of the night. And uh, so I I did watch that one match, and that was it. It really was good. Trish, you know, they, I know you've seen the pictures of her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, man, dude, I know exactly where it happened. And she went old school, man. She, she was taking like a repetitive one, two into the side of the cage, and she was not blocking. She was ramming her head. I think she was trying to hard way herself. <laughs> I really do. Wow. But, yeah, I mean, she was hitting that cage hard, man. That's that's where that came from. Yeah. But yeah, Such it was a-, a good match, and she did a really cool spot too. She was uh, sitting up on top of the cage. I don't nobody's ever done that i've seen uh she got her legs intertwined in the in the what do you call that the truss the truss at the top you know yeah yeah uh but she didn't do it like real obvious so then she took a bump backwards it was like hanging upside down from the top of the cage about to fall to the floor which looked pretty cool but yeah it was a good match man uh yeah you might want to check it out so i will i will definitely do that they said it was her first cage match ever in her career no that's nuts man i mean she's been around you know i'm pretty sure she didn't i don't know was she an indie person or something i don't i don't recall she was she was a Canadian, you know, she was a Canadian fitness model, and then they picked her up in WWE in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. And, you know, but those girls weren't given the opportunities like they are today back then. You know, it was like bra and panties and stuff and, you know, mud mud matches and stuff. It was it was. It's such a different world for women's wrestling now. I, I like that you talk about it a lot, man, because it tells me that that, you know, women's wrestling has finally uh-huh. arrived, you know, so it, women's wrestling is so much better than it used to be, man. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I mean, there was your pioneers, but man, it's just they've they've stepped it up, you know, and, and some of, you know, some of them are really good, man. I always think and this is just a kind of uh, observation of mine. Most girls stomp funny. It's like, can yeah. you not? Stomp like a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's their center of gravity is different than ours. You know that I don't know, man. That's a good point. That is a good point. Yeah, but uh, we got it. We got the cash flow on the show today. We're we're still rhyming, y'all. We got, yeah. We had flash and trash and slash, and now we got cash flow. And, uh, we'll I don't see. even want to tell you what our idea for next week is. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and we're going to talk about the new uh, show that's dropping on Wednesday, the 13th. Is that correct, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah, yeah Wednesday man. the 13th. Wrestlers on Netflix, and it is a documentary-style show based on OVW. Um, so we're going to ask him a little bit about that. I'm anxious to see it. Of course, I'm going to watch stuff like that. Um, just check it out. And, when, and we talked with, you know, Trash and Flash, whether some of us will be featured on there, you know, just a little or anything, you know. But right. we'll see, man. Yeah, I'm excited, and I'm, I'm appreciative to Al for giving us the opportunity to interview one yeah. of his guys. And yeah. I'm excited that it's cash flow because, man, I've known that guy from back in the day, and happy to see he's still working. You know, it's awesome to see that. So very cool. Ten years ago, I think it was, I met him. And, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, anybody that's in the business – Still, after 10 years, when he had already been in for several years before yeah. that, you know, it's it's cool, man. I, I, I like I'm always appreciative of the guys that that can do it for so long, you know? Yeah. 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 No, I'm sure, brother. I'm sure. But, you know, this I'm excited about this documentary, man. I really am. Yeah, so. man, me, too. me too. I'm looking forward to it. And I love like Netflix. 
is one thing about them that I really like is they when they put a new show out, they give you all the episodes, man. Exactly. So like binge I can't that Prime and Paramount and all Disney that. Plus and, and yeah. Like I can't uh-uh. I can't remember what I watched last week. I know. <laughs> give it to me all and I'm gonna binge it. And right. <laughs> yeah, and I because that's how I watch it. And yep. sometimes, like on the Mandalorian or stuff, and, and so I'm not as good about the Mandalorian. But some of those shows, I'll actually just wait till they're all out. Yeah, yes. and then I'll just tear them down and stuff. And at that point, but you know, the Mandalorian, I'm not good about waiting. I, just, I usually you Disney know. makes me so mad that they own so much of my childhood, and then they act like they act. I'll just be straight with you. I lost ESPN on my cable. Oh, oh man, yeah. Yeah, what do you got? Spectrum or something? Is that what yeah, you have? They're greedy, yeah, man. Greedy. yeah, they. You know, but it's all those companies, dude. Uh, we're all the time losing a channel on TV, and it's just different licensing agreements yeah. and stuff. They it's stream their shit. It's like which billionaire gets up on the other billionaire, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, but all right, enough politics. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, take a break and let's come back and let's talk to cash flow. Be right back after these messages. Hey folks, to get your official Live It In Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live It In Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, guys, we're back and we've got cash flow. Now I'm going to tell you something. This is a straight up shoot right here that I have. I don't remember uh, cash flow. When, when was the last time that I actually spoke to you or saw you? Do you remember? I, honestly, Wolfie, I, I really don't remember. We oh. might have crossed paths. We might have crossed paths early 2000s on one of, one of them little indie shows out and about somewhere, dude. I, it's been a long yeah. time, Wolfie. Yeah, I know, man. It's good to have you on here. Uh, when I contacted Al, you. me and me and Jimmy kind of to ourselves were like, you know, because I said, hey, can you want to send somebody on to talk about the Netflix show and blah, blah, blah. But me and Jimmy already had in our heads, we were like, I hope he gives us cash flow. And he <laughs> did. did. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Al's, Al's a little bit Al's a little bit giving in his older age. He'll, he'll be the first to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. But this we were cool, just man. both like good to talk to you. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, good to talk to you and everything. So tell me. I, you know, I, I don't keep up with a lot of current stuff. I see what I see on Facebook and, and social media yeah. stuff. Uh, and then if I see something that I think I need to watch, I'll go watch it. But uh, this is definitely going to be one of those things that I want to watch. But I didn't know that, like, that it was even going on. You know, I don't. So tell us about and tell the listeners how how long they've been doing it. They, did they just follow you guys around for a while? And like, was it kayfabe on purpose, or did everybody know? Or? Um, it, it it was pretty. It was faved on purpose, but it, it's been a while. I mean, you know, I. I don't know if you know anything about like production and, and like Hollywood and that kind of thing, but like we, we did this thing. It, it was a couple of years ago, yeah. you know, it was a couple of yeah. summers ago and you know, yeah. it was just, it was just one of them things that was thrown on the boys, you know, at, at, at OVW. And, you know, I, me personally, I, I jumped at it, you know, so, you know, when you're, when you're in wrestling, Wolfie, you know, that, that, you know, exposure is a big thing trying to get your stuff out there and, yeah. You know, I was like, <laughs> I was like, bring it on. You know, they want me. I'll yeah. give them me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Absolutely. You know, we had um, Al on a couple years ago and he actually brought it up off air, but Wolfie probably just doesn't remember. Oh, I just, yeah. Probably he, he, but he, he, he didn't make sure we were not recording at the time. I, yeah. yeah well, I'm not going to, we could Go talk ahead. about, we could talk, you know, touch on it a little bit. You know, honestly, I don't remember a whole lot. I know they, they filmed a lot of stuff and how they're going to put that out there. The only thing I can say is it's pretty real and the people on there are pretty real. And, yeah. you know, you're just, you're just going to have to watch it, man, is all I'm saying. So let me ask you this. Okay, so on the trailer, uh, I've seen the trailer. I saw you. You're giving like a speech. So what, what is your role in OVW now? 
Um, guys look up to me because of my tenure. Um, mm-hmm. they look to me because of how long I've been around. They look to me for, for guidance on, you know, how you're really supposed to act in, in a locker room and how you're supposed to treat each other. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're, when you're in, when you're in a locker room full of guys, it's just, it's much different when you're in a locker room full of guys that all have the same goal. Yeah. Okay. Right. And my, yeah. my, my job, my job is to help keep these guys kind of focused when they're in that locker room on the same goal, which is making OVW the best that it can possibly be, which will in turn, and it's keeping them understanding that in turn, OVW will be good to them. It will give them other opportunities right. and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I kind of, I'm like a senior, I'm like a senior statesman, you know, I got a lot of respect in there, <laughs> or at least I think I do to my face. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, you know, yeah. how, you know, how, yeah. you know how wrestling is. You know, they could smile at you and then want to yeah, put yeah. your foot off in your ass when you turn yeah. around. But you know, and you're on the surface, coach, you know, that's right? Do you're I? a coach and trainer as well. Yes, I am a teacher. I do teach the the beginning class for the OVW Academy with Al Snow. Um, you know, I, I was grateful for Al to approach me, you know, three years ago and said, Hey, I have this opportunity for you. Would you be interested? You know, I mm-hmm. jumped on it because, you know, that's kind of what you, you know, once, once you're in ring career is at a certain level, you know, you, you start to feel like it's time to give back a little bit. And, yeah, you know, I sure. was at, I was at that point and I'm like, hell yes, I'll, I'll be glad to, to try and, you know, help bring, bring the new crop of guys along. So. That's yeah. cool, man. I did the training thing a few different times, and I, I actually enjoyed doing it. It made me better. Uh, just it was like keeping up with stuff, you know, just like football practice or something. You know what I'm saying? So it like made me oh, better. Hell yeah. And, hell yeah. So it, again, gives you, it gives you ring time. It keeps you yeah. focused. You know, yeah. it, 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 it plus it keeps you current with you know some of these younger guys. I mean, you know how sometimes you yeah. get lost in translation, and and guys yeah. can kind of overlook you. But you know, all the guys come in. You know, I'm the first person that they that they step in the ring with. So, you know, it yeah. it, 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 it keeps me focused and keeps me going, dude. I, I I really enjoy it. I love it. I do. That's good. So, so what did you did you get out of the business for a little while or anything? Because I feel like like. I remember, you know, like you said, around the 2000s or something like that. And then all of a sudden, I don't remember, like, seeing you anywhere. And then now you're back up here. Did you take some time off or? You know, Wolfie, I really didn't take any time off. But Uh once I, you know, once I left where I broke in the business, you know, I Uh left on shitty terms. And I just, I kind of got left to my own devices. So I took a couple bookings here and there. I found yeah. a guy that, that would yeah. book me, you know, a couple times a month. And it really was yeah. just that for a little while. I but then you. I, you know, then I was like, dude, I got to do something. If I want to, either I want to continue to do this yeah. <laughs> or I want to, you know, I want to be done. And yeah. I decided yeah. to continue yeah. to do this. So I started putting in a little more work and, you know, mm-hmm. that, that led me back to, back to OVW. So. That's cool. I wonder, in, in watching the trailer, you tell me what you feel about this. We're talking about the Netflix thing again. Um, like I saw on the trailer, I saw Trailer Park Trash on the on the movie trailer. So I'm like, I wonder how far back they're going to go. Is old Slash going to get a, a cameo? You know, I just or is it going to be a lot of current stuff? You know, <laughs> um, I bet it is a lot of current stuff. But you know, one thing about is is the history of OVW. Wolfie yeah, yeah. Slash is a big part of that history. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. And if yeah. they're talking history on it, dude, they're surely they'll have you on there. Look, I don't know. Like I said, I ain't oh, shit, and, and I don't care. They let way. me I'm see just, shit. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't care either way. I'm just wondering if you care how far a little. Back in- they're gonna go do what <laughs> you care a little you like to see I, yourself hey i care Come just on. a little Wolfie, bit hey <laughs> like hey jimmy Wolfie, wolfie's marking out is what he's doing he's, he's trying to he's, he's trying to on there i hold on there hey, trying not to. i'll be the first to tell you i've always been a mark for myself <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> oh so i've hey, heard no I'm just that's right. how that's how i got better i did not watch you know you hear people say oh i'm sitting under the learning tree watching videos Fuck that. I want to see what my shit looked like. So that that's how when I was first starting out, I'd watch myself and I'd be honest with myself. That looked like shit. Don't do that no more or fix that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I've that is, I, but that, you were 
you are absolutely fucking correct though. That's the way it has to be. And that's what, you know, you, that's what you tell these young guys coming up, watch your stuff, critique your stuff, you know, yeah. don't necessarily, you know, pat yourself on the back a whole lot, be right. critical of yourself because that makes you better. That makes you a whole lot better. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Jimmy, I'm going to make the hot tag to you. Jump in. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, like we said, we we did want you on the show with with this. When when we saw the, you know, we were like, okay, our next episode is going to be on September 11th. Two days later, the show drops. It would be great if we could get somebody. So we were happy that it's you. So just to kind of go off to the show a little more now, if I'm to understand, you haven't seen it, correct? That's absolutely correct. I don't See, even that's, remember half the stuff they recorded, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this will be because they sent us the whole season ahead of time because we're press. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. Uh, well, they did send the press to have. Yeah, yeah, that well, we're just we're just a little old podcast here, but <laughs> yeah. but so when it, when it cuz they've done other things like Last Chance You, I'm a big fan of that show. I haven't seen the show Cheer, but I've seen Cheers back in the day, but not Cheer, but I've seen Last Chance You and that's a really good show. Yeah. The the part that I like about that show is they they go deeper with like the family stuff. So I did see that it looks like there's some interaction with your family where they getting a kick out of that. Yeah, my my son and my daughter, they both loved it. You know, yeah. they, you know, but see, my son and my daughter have always been around wrestling. Yeah. You know, I have pictures when they, when they were, when they were babies, you know, rolling on top of me in a wrestling ring. My kids have always been around wrestling. So no matter how big the, the crowds are, or, you know, it, it's just, it, it feels kind of like home to them. You know yeah. what I mean? They yeah. get they get a little anxious and have a little bit of anxiety when they're around a huge crowd of people. But, mm. you know, the, they just know me as dad and anything that I do in the ring or, you know, when people come up to me in stores or, you know, and it, it's it's nothing new to them. They're just like, that's my dad. My son just <laughs> as soon flip me off and give me the finger than anything. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, hey, yeah, you're raising them right. I love it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like it goes really in depth to what would consider like the daily life of a wrestler. Do you feel like now I, you know, my wife watches all these like housewife shows and all these like Beverly Hills Gaga bullshit and. <laughs> I, do they is there some element of Hollywood in it as far as like how they do stuff? You know, we've heard how people act and they say there's multiple takes because of multiple edits and scenes. And do you find that it was a lot of Hollywood in it or did you feel like it was basically, hey, look, I'm living my life and here's a camera in front of me, which I, I have no problem with? What would you say? I would say. I would say there probably wasn't enough Hollywood in it. I oh, think okay. that, you know, okay. when they, when they come, when they came to me, you know, and all I can do is speak on, on my experiences. When they came yeah. to me, you know, all they would say is, Hey, cash, be yourself. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I don't know. You know, like I said, I don't know about any, I don't know about anybody else. I wasn't around for anybody else's. All I know is when they showed up, you know, or wherever I was, because, you know, if I remember correctly, which I don't know, if I remember correctly, it wasn't just, you know, stuff at my house. They, they, they were at other places with me. Hell, I think yeah. they caught my asshole a few times. So um, <laughs> hey. it, it was just, <laughs> it, was just, it was just, they would show up and say, Hey, we're going to follow you, do what you do. And, and that was that, you know, there was no discussion on, you know, there was no discussion on, Hey, can you move this way? Can you talk about it? Nah, there really wasn't any of that. I didn't have any of that. So. And I mean, uh, it, just to kind of go off of that, I imagine how big or small of a crew were they as far as following you around? I'm all into the other side uh, of things, you know, so. <laughs> uh, it, it was a, it was a big, it was a big crew, yeah. you know, two or three, van, two or three vans worth, you know, and yeah. I, it, 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 it was a big crew. They they would take up a lot of space, you know, which yeah. sometimes didn't fit too well during dinner time. <laughs> oh man, I'm sure. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it, they took up a lot of space, but you know what? In, they go to the, the gym end, with it's, it's, yeah, yeah. In the <laughs> end, the it's all going to be worth. 
Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I'm a hit at the gym because I also yeah, do some yeah. customers. I used to do some customer service stuff there, uh, you know, because I, I've known I've known the lady there for a long time. So, gotcha. yeah, you know, okay. she, she was she was pretty she was pretty cool with it. So I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I was That's just cool. thinking like, you, you know, there was a Planet Fitness or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. I wouldn't be caught dead in Planet Fitness. I, I they, they'd be ringing that. They'd be they'd be ringing that alarm on me 24 seven. I would never get a workout here. <laughs> I don't I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm a gym rat. I have to go to the gym. Shit. Yeah. So I, I go to the gym when I just had hernia surgery. So I've been out for about two months, but, uh, can't wait to get back in there. Yeah, I'm sure. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's go. He said, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> no, it's good for my mental health as well. I promise. But nah, let's, that go I do agree to, with. <laughs> let's go back to man. What? Who? Who is your mentor in this business? Initially, yeah, like who? who uh, I guess who trained you? But then, is there somebody like after that? You know, a few people after that. And I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about early on. Like, well, who's, who is your peeps? You know where I broke into professional wrestling at. Um, would I say that that I dude I was a mentor? Do what? <laughs> I said I think I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, to say that that dude was a mentor would be using that term a little loosely. Yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. consider that a mentor. He let me break in the business there, but yeah. I, I did the work. Okay. Right. Now, as far as mentors, right. you yeah. know, guys like Frank, yeah. guys like Bull Payne, Tracy Smothers, of course, Tracy was a mentor to a lot of guys. Oh, right. You know, I, I, I looked up I looked up to him a whole lot, and he helped me a whole lot, yeah. you know, when I was young, my first five years in the business. You know, mm -hmm. after that, it was just kind of, you know, who I could talk to, you know, who I could get around and, and be the young boy and pull up that chair and sit and listen to, you know, oh, yeah. Wolfie. And I, at some point, you were, you were one of those guys, too, Wolfie. Uh, absolutely. You know, you, you, you were always to me of the two of you guys, you were always the one that was down to earth and you were more than willing to talk to the young guy. Unless of course you just stuck a fist in Ox Harley's face and then you were a little harder to talk to <laughs> sometimes. But. Oh my God. Oh, I'm just imagine. saying, I'm just saying. Were you there that night? Hell yeah, I was there. Okay. Hell yeah, I was there. <laughs> How was that, man? And you know what? I think I had. I think I. They put me in the ring with you after the fact. Did like, they? Like like yeah. a couple shows. Yeah, like a couple shows later. Oh, I swear. I thought you meant that night. I was like, oh, yeah. No, was, not that night. Hell, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what was going on that night. You were <laughs> you were a little heated that night. So I, I don't know. I tried to stay. Just, you know, I stay away. I, he he kind of, he had an attitude from the get go. That was the first time we'd ever met, and I'll say right now, me and him are cool, and we talk and you yeah. know, laugh sometimes. But uh, he had an attitude towards me, man. And it, see, work it, we were working for WWF E whatever at the time, and right. it, there really was a policy. You know, contracted guys could not bleed, and if you did indie shows, you could not bleed. So I'm telling him, okay, you know, chairs, stop signs, all the blunt objects, that's cool, but none of these. These tack bats and baseball <laughs> nails and none of that shit that these people bring. I don't know what's on that, you know, yeah, and, which uh, they love to bring, by the way. I know. <laughs> but then your partner it's all over the place. But then then people are demented, man. Some of the shit they would bring. <laughs> but then your yeah, partner started it all. <laughs> yeah. If Jamie brings the bat into the play. He brings it into play. Well, I end up getting hit with it. And fucking, I didn't like that. Yeah, push comes to shove. Shit happens. Uh, yeah. It, it, it was very interesting. That, that And that arena was full that night. Yeah, like, there was, was a lot of yeah. people in there. Packed. Yeah. You yeah, know, that, that time they were serving beer in the, I mean, it was crazy. It was full. Yeah. Yeah. It Man. was wild back then. But yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't remember who I, I thought that was where you came from. And, uh, yeah, that dude is something else. But anyway, Jimmy, jump on in and ask that. So, man some more yeah. You end up actually now you work Wolfie. I, I know for a fact, the date on this is November 13th, 1998. You worked Wolfie Ooh. D. Now, how long were you in the biz at that point? Cash. Uh, I had been in the business a little over a year. I started training late 96. Yeah. I had my first match against the dirty white boy, Tom Burton yes. in July yeah. of 1997. 
Now, that's exactly what I wanted you to say. Thank you, sir. You're really good at this. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So, absolutely. Talk about Tom Burton, man. That's exactly what I wanted you to bring up. Tom Burton. Oh, we, I've heard oh so God. many stories about Tom, I, I, you know, but I would love to hear what your thoughts are. The very first match you've wrestled, Dirty White Boy, Tom Burton. I, mean, I had no clue what to think. You know, they, they come to a young guy. And, of course, back then it was all about, hey, let's, fuck, let's, let's rib the young guy. Let's, yeah. let's put this guy over like he's gonna, this young guy is going to get killed. So here I am. They <laughs> yeah. got this guy. They say, hey, yeah. let me introduce you to this shooter. His name's Tom Burton. <laughs> right. I'm like, uh. At that time, I'm like, what the fuck is a shooter? I don't know what a shooter is. <laughs> you know like what active? I mean? I'm, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, has he got a gun? Is he going to attack me? What's, what's going to happen? You know, I had no clue. And then they explained it to me, and I'm like, okay, he's going to be a little stiff. I'm going to have to show my nuts, and I'm just going to have to fucking sell and whatever. Yeah. Man, he beat the shit out of me, and he stretched me and stretched me and stretched me. And <laughs> initially, they told me what... Here's how bad it was. Initially, they told me what a finish was, and uh, I couldn't even get to that finish because he put me in a single leg Boston Crab. I thought he was gonna rip my leg off. So oh I just fucking God. tapped out. I couldn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you tapped I said, Fuck out. It, I'm done. I can't do nothing. Yeah, that I couldn't finish. fucking do nothing. <laughs> no, that wasn't a finish. I didn't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> so I was like, there we go. Great. That's and funny, the first man, fall. you know what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've talked about this with uh, – we, we talked about it with Tony Anthony, as a matter of fact. But Tom was a dick, man. I was cl- – I, me and Tom were cool, but he was a fucking dick, man, for real. He used to try to do – I he never had, – He had one of his trainees uh, punch me, like a shoot punch, and that was the finish. Like it was, he had a chain, and he I know he told him to shoot punch me. So <laughs> there, there was nothing I could really do. You know what I'm saying? That was the finish. Yeah. Yeah, but he was a dick, I, I never, yeah, I never, I never even talked to him, dude. I, I was at the point where I, when I walked up to him, I kid, here's what we're gonna do. That's we're good. gonna do that thing. And, yeah. Oh, and my Tom Burton voice. That's perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> uh, but that's all, dude. I had like two sentences. Of, Just listen to me, kid. Just listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> all right, whatever. I sure it. hope that I sure hope you've seen the pictures of him when he came back from Japan after taking his ass whooping o- over there uh, in the early nineties. I don't know if you remember Ooh, about that. I, I do remember, but I don't. I don't remember seeing any pictures. Were they good? Yeah, they were good. He got his ass in It's the fucking internet. I'm going to have to look that shit up. Just <laughs> it's out there. It's been a long time since I've seen them. Like, the pictures I saw were actual picture pictures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hard Man, cop. Yeah. Man, I've looked at your your list of matches, and I mean, you know, let's just go down. You know, your Madman Pondo Bull Payne, Flash Flanagan, and I stop right there. How was it working, Flash? We we we're big fans of Flash on the show, and we've had hey, him on. Man, well, times. you you got another one. I'm I'm a huge fan of Flash. I I have been for years, and I've actually had the opportunity, you know, a little later in in my wrestling career for you know, to hook up with Flash and get to get to work with Flash. So I'm still a huge fan of Flash. You know, I think he was criminally, criminally underrated. Yeah, yeah. he could have been, you know, he could have been one of those. I think. In my opinion, Flash totally. Flanagan could have been one of those, man. Yeah, we agree. We agree highly. You know, he's just so funny and how like he he he's just got his he's just flash. You know, how can you say it any different? But the stories he has just about Puerto Rico alone <laughs> will have you rolling in the floor, you know. So yeah. uh, now I guess let me ask you this, because this is a good you know, I do kind of I met you and Wolfie around the same time and it, it wasn't very far apart, actually. And you guys both had this demeanor about you in the locker room that you you were kind of like when I was in the locker room with you I was never in the lo- same locker room but with all three of you but or all t- <laughs> with both oh. of you all three I'm making up a new person so <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that is you guys seem like two guys that people came to to talk to how did that f- when did that flip for you cash like when did you turn from the guy that went to guys to guys starting to come to you when did that happen you, you know what I, I I honestly don't know when it happened but it was distinct for me you know I'd always been somebody that had been easy to approach and was always Talk, wanting to talk with everybody else. And yeah. uh, for whatever reason, eventually it just, 
it flipped to if if I come in, you know, and I'm doing something, guys would just they would they would come and and say hi and and you know, of course, I would reciprocate because I'm easy to get along with and I I have no problem if somebody wants needs an opinion on something or needs a little help putting something together. I I've always been one of those dude. I would be glad to help out and I'm going to continue to do that until you know, my body says, all right, you dumbass, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, talking about, you know, not having a problem giving back to some of the guys. Let's go back to that match, Jimmy. You said uh, that was me and cash flow and he had been in the business a year. Who won that match? <laughs> <laughs> Does it you, say? Cash okay. flow did. Cash, cash flow, flow did. won that. And he had been in the business a year. And here I am putting him over. Now, tell me that I, anybody that ever says I've had an attitude about putting people over or anything like that can kiss my ass. <laughs> There's proof. Well, I've never heard that attitude, and I would argue with anybody that would say that. Because that, ne- that has never been my interactions with Wolvie D. So, right. you know, right. they can say whatever, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe they're looking at something else. So, Yeah, yeah I don't think I, – I, I agree because, I like I said, I compared you to – you know, because here's Wolfie D, and I'm admittedly a PG-13 mark when I first meet Wolfie D. And he's sitting over there, and he looks a little different, but I know that's damn Wolfie D. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah. well shit, I'm going to try to talk to him. You know, he knows something. You know, some of these – I'm standing beside some guy guy who's picking his nose and doesn't know what he's doing. I'm going to work my way over there to try to talk. And it's the same with you, Cash. You know, I first met you in 2013 at the Charm and Charles Benefit at the NWA main event for Mike Porter. You yeah. had a you had a crew with you, man. And, you know, but I will say this. And again, no disrespect to those guys because I think they're managers and they were announcers and stuff like that. But you had an air right. about you that I just was like, man, I want to talk to that guy. Something about him. Maybe it's the calluses on his knuckles. Maybe it's the <laughs> you know the blade marks on his forehead, whatever. But that's a guy that I want to talk to. I, it's a, like a magnetism. And again, I was a PG-13 mark. That's what, what made me want to talk to Wolfie. But at the same time, you know, I didn't know you from Adam, but I wanted to talk to you you had something about you and i think that it i wonder if they could bottle that <laughs> you know what i'm saying because i feel like a lot of the newer guys maybe you know aren't aren't getting that as much if they if they don't have a locker room leader in the in the place you know yeah i i, I would totally agree you know i say i think that that probably stems from how you come up you know, in, in professional wrestling, I don't think, you know, you come up a little bit different these days as opposed to, you know, the mid nineties or when Wolfie broke in somewhere, what early nineties, mid eighties, Wolfie, early eighties, 89, early eighties. Yeah. I love it. (laughs) I love it. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, it's it's just, it's, it's a different time. And, and the guys nowadays, you know, anybody can break into wrestling nowadays. Right. You know, you had to know somebody that knows somebody back then, and you had right. to put in the work, and you had to fight for whatever it is that you got. And, mm-hmm. you know, that that's, that's, that's not, that's, you know, that just doesn't happen these days. Yeah. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope-ass sponsors, and we'll be right back with more Live and in Color with Wolfie D. This is Steve Bowtie Bryant here. Back in the 90s, I was a pro wrestling photographer for the South, and I released what might have been one of the original sets of indie trading cards. I ran across some of these original sets. They were up in Randall Fanning's attic all this time. PG-13 rookie card, Ricky Morton, George Weingroff as the Sheep, Chris Champion, Reno Riggins, Billy Montana, Gary Valiant, the Scorpion, the Medic, Rick Reynolds, Jeff Daniels, Mephisto and Dante, Ben Jordan, Steve Neely, Marcus Woodrow, Clinton Charisma, Little Farmer John. If you'd like an opportunity to get these cards, contact me now. You can get them for only $49.99. Contact me at Steve Bowtie Bryant at iCloud.com. Get your set now while supplies last. Support for Live and in Color with Wolfie D is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 
20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFIE at manscaped.com. If my math's correct, that's about 8 million balls. Let me ask you this, man. The students that are coming in, you say you get the beginners. Now, have these have have a lot of them already had matches like they started out in the Indies and then they figured, okay, I better go get trained correctly? Or are you getting really fresh people or both? I, I probably would guess. I, I'm I am getting really fresh green people. We're yeah. talking people that see it on TV and want to give it a shot. I wow. got you. It, okay. it, I have I've not had I've not in the three years I've been doing it. I've had one person that's had a little bit of experience outside of, and by a little bit of experience, they tried going to another school and it didn't work out for them. I got it. Okay. Okay. So they're, they're, they're brand new. They're green as green as goose shit. I mean, yeah. it is, yeah. you know, and you got to teach them from the get go, right. you know, and I actually, I actually like it that way, Wolfie, because yeah. Then you don't have all them bad habits that you exactly. got to break, you know. And you can teach them. You can, you can get them in there, and yeah, and you can get them going in the right path, and and that's where it starts. You you don't have to backtrack on anything, so you know yeah. that that's yeah. good. Yeah. I know one of the first things I would do, you know, uh, when someone would start. I'm serious. Like uh, I think the first thing I would teach them not lock up, not none of that. Usually it was run the ropes, because. To me, that that's like the hardest thing for so many of them to get is how to do that correctly. What about you? Um, I honestly, my what I concentrate on is intent. I think mm-hmm. you know from what I see these days, I think uh, intent is lost. And I think you know, no matter what you can do, if you actually believe in who you are and mm-hmm. and the things you will do will translate because I think connection is a big thing in wrestling, connecting mm-hmm. with the fans and whatnot. And yeah. I, I think if guys can, can get down, you know, the intent behind professional wrestling, which is professional wrestling, For sure. then I, sure. I think, I think the personality will come and all that other stuff comes with experience, you know, running the ropes. Well, you know, give, giving them good habits on, timing and and ring positioning and stuff like that right intent is the hardest thing to teach young folks because you know if people don't believe in who you are and why you're doing shit then they're not going to get behind you at all so right right you do have to teach that my point really was more of i could tell what i what type of athleticism and, and stuff that i'm dealing with by trying to teach somebody to run the ropes uh, I, that was. Uh, you're that, absolutely. You're absolutely right on that. You're I, absolutely yeah. right That's on how that. I would kind of judge. Like, okay, this is going to be. This motherfucker will never make it, or okay, they'll get it. You know, that talk. It, it's just amazing, and how they. You know, when you start hitting them things for the first time, you're going home with some bruises and shit on your back. I don't <laughs> care. If you are. Absolutely. And and so I that, usually, Wolfie, I usually do that about eight weeks in, brother. Really. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I usually about eight weeks in because, you know, then they think, you know, because I'm teaching them how to bump and, you know, I'm teaching them, you know, some ground wrestling stuff, some holes, some switches and stuff like that. And right. then they think they finally start to, to get it. I was like, all right, now you're going to run the ropes. And then they come back to me the next class and they're like, oh, my God, my back is hurting yeah. so yeah. bad. <laughs> you know. Oh, man. Yeah. Hit them. Hit them hard. Throw a curveball in on them. <laughs> yeah. You know, th- this leads me to a good question that, you know, Trailer Park Trash, it, it's so funny. We're having like, o- we have like OVW spurts, man. We'll have like <laughs> Jack Vaughn and, and Ryan Rocket and Doug Basham on in like three episodes. And then now we've had, you know, literally the legacy of like Trailer Park Trash. And then we, the last episode, we brought Trash back and brought on Flash and had on Slash. So we, <laughs> uh, we, we, we have on Flash. And Flash. Now we and have now cash. We got cash. <laughs> so, so Holy what up? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? We just like to rhyme over here. But when, you know, Trash brought up the idea that under Danny Davis, it was con- kind of considered like the Harvard of pro wrestling, basically. You go to OVW, and I do believe it It seems like Al probably is the logical next best choice for the continuation of the Harvard of professional wrestling, yeah. you know. But when it comes down to it, where do you see OVW like 
at its current state along the legacy, you know, because they had the, the the guys that Danny brought in and then the superheroes came along. And then you yeah. got now the, the current crop, which, man, we're big fans of Ryan Rocket. We're big fans of Jack Vaughn, you know, big fans of you, man. And, you know, when it comes down to it, we like to see the, the we would love to know kind of what the pulse is on the current crop, in your opinion. And, and, and as far as where they're at in the legacy, um, it's definitely not a, a school show like it was probably the last 10 years with Danny. Yeah. Um, I, it, it's definitely not a school show. Um, I think in this current crop, you know, the personalities are at the tip top. Okay. You know, it's more, pers- it's more personality based and, and storytelling based. Okay. Um, you know, you, you have a bunch of different characters on there and these characters are, you know, through the roof. Now, as far as where they're at in the, the, the legacy part of it. And I just, just like I said on the trailer, I think OVW is at a point now where they are the little engine that could, you know, they have, they have all this, this, this hype and this thing behind them now. And you know, it, it could mean, it could mean, it could mean a lot. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. OVW is now the little engine that could. Yeah. You know. And now's their chance. They got a big opportunity standing right in front of them, man. Uh, tell us. Uh, and I know you said you haven't seen it, but I know you kind of know who the who the main focuses are going to be. Tell the listeners who the stars of the show are. And tell us a little bit about each one. I mean, I, I, Wolfie, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I know. <laughs> you know, I know who. I know who. You know, I know I. They followed me a little bit. How much yeah. I'm featured, I have no clue. Yeah. You know, if you want to look at the trailer, mm-hmm. if you want to look at the trailer, uh, I'm in the trailer. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. Haley, Haley is in. Haley J is in the trailer. Al Snow, the owners, Matt Jones, Mayor Craig Greenberg. Yeah. Um, you know, those guys are in the trailer. Yeah. You know, if you if you want me to, do you really want me to? to talk to you about some of those guys that are in it? Well, I mean, if you want to just, uh, you know, say where you think they're at, and I mean, can they handle w- the load that they're fixing to be presented with possibly, you know? Uh, I think as a whole, I think they all can handle the load. You know, okay. I think the youngest one on there is, is Haley, mm-hmm. Haley J. Mm-hmm. Um, can she handle Marie, it? That's his daughter. Uh, yeah, that's, Mar- that's Maria's daughter. Now, do I, I do think she can handle it? I, yeah. I, honestly, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't, I didn't see her story. You know, I know who she is. Right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, only time, yeah. only time will tell with her. You know, she's got a long way to go. She's gotcha. Got a long yeah. way to go. Yeah. yeah, we'll be interested to to keep up with. I'm sure the listeners will enjoy watching the show too. So, we'll all kind of learn a little bit as we go. I reckon because I, you know, I, I, I'm interested to see well, it. I am. Yeah. But keep in mind, Wolfie, I'm and I'm and I can't stress this enough, man. And it it is a, everything that you are going to see on this show is absolutely who the guys are, and you 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 being you know who you are and where you've been in professional wrestling, Wolfie, you will be able to tell if somebody's Hollywooding it up. Right, right. you will be able right. to tell for sure. Okay. So you know, but these people on here that are featured are absolutely who they are. And I hope, which, you know, I, I know Greg Whiteley, the director, the guy, the guy that directed last chance, you and cheer. I know that guy has got an eye and he's creative as hell and he does know how to tell a story. So, you know, you can bet that that it's, it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 Back off of the show. I've got to ask this question because this is one of my favorite videos on YouTube and I'll go to it randomly just to watch the crowd. The Tracy Smothers Bobby Eaton match that broke out into a riot at IWA Mid-South. Were you there that night? Um, Where was it at? It was the smaller building, not the bigger building. I think was y'all it in just Louisville moved- or was it in, Char- was it in Charlestown, Indiana? I think it was in Charlestown. Yeah. Yeah, I was there. I was there at all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every single bit of it yeah it, it was crazy because honestly i'll watch it now just to look to see what the crowd's doing but you know obviously you know tracy and bobby are working i mean that's two of the greatest of all time right there but 
Right, at the same yeah. time, it, it was funny how Tracy could work a crowd so well and mm. literally have them salivating to kill him, you know? <laughs> and and he's standing <laughs> in the middle of probably, what, maybe 250 people? I, I don't know, maybe not that many, but around that amount, maybe more. That's and, about what that building could hold, about 250, yeah. And he's giving them the come on fingers, you know, like bring it on, you know? And every one of them yeah. are saying, I see a guy, he rips his shirt off, big fat guy. And I mean, real big fat guy. He like, puts out a cigarette on his arm and he's just trying to be tough with Tracy. And it's just funny because Bobby would dip, you know, Bobby would dip out. He would go somewhere. I don't know where it was. Maybe he was just selling. Uh, and it was, the focus was on Tracy, but Tracy's like, God, yeah, I think he went to the back. I think okay. he went to the back and let, okay. let, and let Tracy do his thing. Okay. He was like, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Oh, uh, and, and a girl tries to take that big piece of wood from Tracy, and he gets all hot, and then he sees it's a girl, and he calms down. It's great. I've watched that video way too many times, but now I'm oh, going to yeah, look absolutely. for you, Cash, if you come out there. So, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I don't come out there if if it's the one I'm thinking of. I think uh, uh, Mitch Page comes out, and I think yeah. Tracy ends up punching him in the mouth. He does. And, yep. Yep. Uh, That's it. That's it. Mark Wolf comes out, I think, and ends up. I don't know. Tracy ends up doing something. Yeah. I, want, I, thought, I want to say I've seen Chris Hero come out. He does. Yep. 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 Yeah. Well, that's a yeah, good question. Yeah, that's a good question, too, because I looked at your match history. Obviously, I'm the research guy here, and <laughs> I go through, and I see you work like, again, you work all those legends like Pondo, Bull Payne, Flash Flanagan, Wolfie D, Tom Burton, those guys. And then you get to, like, the new crop of guys who are kind of the indie darlings, like Colt Cabana and Chris Hero. Talk about working those guys, especially in Necro. Of course, you worked Necro in 2001, too, but how, how do you, you know, like, and then you go on to Kevin Sullivan. So, I mean, you're really working so many types of different wrestlers during that time. I guess talk about how how that was. I mean, did you did you understand where those guys were and what they were doing at the time, especially somebody like Colt Cabana and Chris Hero? I, absolutely. You know, because in all honesty, when you get to the back and, and you're talking to these guys, you know, yeah. they're on the same page as you. They just want to entertain. They have, you know, they have their own styles. And of course, you know, where I come up, you know, is more of a brawling style. But, you know, I really enjoyed, you know, raising raising the bar with them and, and trying to work their style of matches with them to see if, you know, maybe that I could. So I took it as a huge challenge to be able to do that. I think at one time, Jimmy, I think at one time I went 60 minutes with Chris Hero and loved every minute of it. Wow. You know, hold yeah. to hold and stuff like that. So, it, you know, I, I really, you know, and that helped me move along in my career because, you know, you're, you know, versatility is a big thing in wrestling. You know, you, oh, you yeah. catch a booking out somewhere, the style is different and, you know, you, you want them to bring you back. So you got to be able to work with the guys that are there working. So. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Let yep. me ask this. I, I want to go back to the to the show again, real quick. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so th there's obviously, if you're on the Degum cover or whatever, if you're on the thumbnail, you're going to be featured, I would imagine. So there's a dude spitting out water that's got a mohawk. Who's that guy? That is Crixus. He is the guy. He's a guy from Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, he come over here. He, um, I think he was in Al's original uh, when they first started. Uh, the um what do you call it where they were giving out a free scholarship to al school oh, okay uh, he was he was on the initial thing there and, and he he's been coming back and forth from scotland he's been here for you know forever how long and he every now and again he has to go back to scotland but yeah his name is crixus cool. uh -huh. you know he's pretty good he's a crazy great great yeah he's crazy scottish guy <laughs> crazy scottish guy but good <laughs> yeah, work he is too um, he's, he's young, yeah. you know, he's got, he's got, he's got loads of personality though. And that's going to take him far. You know, the other stuff can come with time. Right. Yeah. 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 Isn't it amazing in in our business that really it's, it really is about the charisma, man. It really is. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Charisma, charisma can take you, can take you to the moon. You yeah. Know? yeah. But you can you can have all the you can have all the moves and be as technically sound as as you want to be the best in the world. And if you if you don't have any charisma, yep. you know you're liable to to drop off and, yep. and never be heard from again. Yeah, 
Yeah, true. All right, go ahead, Jimmy. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. So I guess in 2019, you end up working. And brother, you've got a resume a mile long before that. But in 2019, (laughs) you show up at OEW. And honestly, your resume is not what you would consider somebody who would actually end up going to OVW and being an OVW star. It's funny now that you you're actually a big part of it. So what led you to choose or what led you to go to OVW in that year? Um, that is actually my second stint. Okay. Actually, uh, my first stint was in 2009, 2010. I did, I went, I went over there with, Madman Pondo and Two Tough Tony and did an invasion angle That's right. for Juggalo Championship Wrestling. You know all oh. about Juggalo, don't you, don't you, Wolfie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Yeah, you got a kick out of that, didn't you? Yeah, that was that was a mess, man. That uh one of the craziest events I've ever worked on in my life, man. <laughs> Fucking A. It 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 absolutely was. Hey, on that note before I finish. Wolfie, I worked the show, uh, I worked the, the Juggalo Gathering uh, two years ago, uh-huh. and it was a wrestling show that took place at, it started at 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, that's, that's. Uh, I don't remember what year it was that I did it, but that was the thing that I did, man. They, it, you know, that big open area, people are camping and naked. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> and there's a play. Craziness a play. upon craziness. <laughs> yeah, and, and there was like every wrestler on the planet was booked. And uh, the match, I went on at like five in the morning. Uh, I think we did wrestle twice, but yeah, I did a spot. I, I've told this story before, but this is, and this is the only place where this could go down. But uh, me and Kevin Thorne are fighting outside the ring, and um, there's a chick in the front row with the makeup on, no shirt, the big old boobs. And uh, I grab him by the yeah. head, and I look at the people. And I look at her boobs, and I look at the people, and I look at her boobs, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I motorboat him <laughs> on her boobs. <laughs> and, and then, Kevin Thorne was loving you. You were over with Kevin after <laughs> yeah. that, wasn't you? So I motorboat him, and he, as he sells, he sells like somebody's throwing powder in his face or something. <laughs> and he's staggering all around. <laughs> that's great. That's oh, my God. But that's the only place that you can get away with that, man. And, and Absolutely. Also, a uh, uh, a landmark of the, the of the show. There was a little place called Drug Bridge. Uh, that was the name of it. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they still have that to this day. They they oh, still okay. have that. <laughs> Does yeah, it actually have you a see guys searching for it when they go there. Where's yeah. the bridge? Where's the bridge? Yeah, it's, they have one of Where's those the bridge signs. at? Where's the bridge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's 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 nuts. But anyway, those- I did an invasion angle back to 2009 and 10. I did the invasion angle. With for Juggalos right before I think uh, Violent J and Shaggy was going to come into OVW and do a little thing. Okay. I did the invasion angle with Pondo and Tony, and I was the last one there. Something happened. Pondo didn't want to do it no more. Something happened. Tony didn't want to do it no more. So I ended up being there for about a year and a half, and then I just Gosh. went about my way because the business the business end of it was a little little different for my taste. Yeah. Got so me. I just, I went back out on the, the, the Indies and I ended up actually coming back in 2016 and working for Danny, like, you know, right, right. As Danny was, you know, looking for a buyer or whatever, you know, looking to sell it. And I think Al bought it in, uh, I don't know, 17 or 18. Mm-hmm. And that, that was where I first met Al when, when That's he true. bought it, you know, my first interaction was Al. Hi, Al. You know, my name is Cat. My name is Mike. You know, I'm Cash Flow. He was like, "Damn, you you actually look like a wrestler." <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. You do though. Well, you that do. was my first interaction. Yeah. So I was like, "Yeah, I'll take yeah. it." Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> good true, compliment. Though. Yeah, because there is yeah, that- good compliment. Man. And, and you know this, man, just from being around different people and stuff, and it's happened to me, like, people look at me like if they they won't have a clue who I am, but there's I've had people like, man, you look like a wrestler. You know what I mean? And that's a yeah. good – not everybody has that quality, man. That's a good quality. It's true. Yeah. It, it, that'll, that'll take you – it's like instant credibility. That'll take you a long way. If you yeah. looked apart, you yeah. know, as long as you don't shit the bed when you're trying to be the part. 
So yeah. when somebody sees you and they say, you look like a wrestler, Cash, who do they normally, do you know The Rock? Do you know Hulk Hogan? <laughs> <laughs> do they ever ask you uh, that No, stuff? they, they, a lot of times they tell me, for whatever reason, they tell me I look like Brock Lesnar. They, <laughs> they tell me I look like Triple H. Yeah. They tell, <laughs> you know, they don't ask me who I know. They ask, they tell me who I look like. Oh, like, okay. like well, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. I got one guy in OVW that I need you to take to the chop shop, okay? Can you do this for me? Just do it oh, as, you know, casually. I know you like it. Is it. That ZDP kid, man, we had him set up for a podcast, and he chose to go to Raw instead of being <laughs> on the podcast. So we'll uh, – A little ZDP you want me to take? Okay, I'll, I'll gladly. Yeah. I like ZDP, but, you know, he, he'll have to take one for the team. Well, here's what he told me. He said, my work is keeping me over late. He works at the Ford plant because my buddy is the one that got his, got me hooked up with him, who also works at the Ford plant. And he said, right. we never work over. We're union. We leave at the same time. <laughs> and uh, then I see him on Facebook saying, hey, who's got tickets for Raw? <laughs> and he goes to Raw uh, instead of being on the podcast. So, you know. He fades you. Yeah, I'll, glad, I'll gladly open up the door for him. <laughs> okay, just you know, one, maybe two or three, you know. But yeah, and it'd probably be more than that. But yeah, I'd gladly yeah. do that for you. <laughs> well, I was putting him over. I said, "You remind me of a young Wolfie D, man. You've got, you know, the way I see your videos and stuff. You, you and your yeah. your guy, you, your manager, y'all remind me of PG thirteen a little bit." And he was like, oh, "I've heard that before." And I'm like, "Okay, well, hey, this will be perfect." And then he faved me totally. K faved hmm. hardcore. Oh. Well, it's all yeah. good. We'll get him on back in about good 10 or so. <laughs> so before we, well, before you know. we wrap this up, Cash, uh, right. think of your best road story. Give me your best, funniest, if it's a rib, if it's just something, you know, to do with some of the people we talked about today or anything like that. Uh, my, the one that I tell that a few people have heard uh -huh. is I was in Detroit, Michigan, of course, I was with Pondo. I was doing the very first Juggalo show at uh -huh. St. Andrew's Hall. Uh -huh. You know, of course, this was wild yeah, and crazy. Huge. People yeah. people were in the in the rafters, and the rafters started to break. Oh, and, I mean, there were so many – it started to break and started to come down. I mean, it was just – it was crazy. And I was young, and I had done this battle royal. Uh -huh. And, you know, wh whatever. We got paid. We, we got our gear. We was leaving. I was walking out with – um, Too Tough Tony, Madman Pondo, and a couple other guys you're probably familiar with. They they enjoy rock and roll music. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know they they yeah. have that moniker. You know they're Hall yeah. of Famers. Those those yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah, we were walking yeah. out and we were we were getting ready. You know we were gonna partake in some you know a little bit of cannabis or whatever. We were gonna. <laughs> hey, Cash, you ready to do this? And I turned around. And I was walking next to Pondo. Pondo got a little bit ahead of me. Somebody said something to me behind me. And mm -hmm. as I was walking out the door, all of a sudden, I get smashed. I don't know what it is. All of a sudden, I'm pinned to the fucking ground. I got my gear bag underneath me. I don't know what the fuck it is. Okay? <laughs> and then I hear, I hear one of the Hall of Famers yelling at Cash, what are you doing? Get out from under that dumpster. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> and all of a sudden, this fucking waste management truck raises this fucking dumpster off my head. Oh I brush my myself off. Yes. And I see a fucking the driver look, takes one look at me and starts running down the street, leaves his truck running, uh, parked right here with the dumpster up in the air, and he's running down the street. Oh, my God. <laughs> he just left it? <laughs> yeah, he just left it there. He wasn't going. I and thought, look, I thought you, he was going to run to check on you, man. <laughs> he he took one. When I stood up out from under the dumpster, he took one look at me and took oh, off running the other way. He was scared. I get yeah. it now. He that thinks, makes I sense. Just, I took, just killed this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I would check on him. That's what I would and do. Then, and then, <laughs> yeah. Well, he seen. I guess he got scared because he seen me get up, brush makes myself sense. off. Makes sense. <laughs> now. I, I made eye contact with him, and he fucking he took <laughs> he, off. He does spent smash, two and a half he hours. With Michael Myers. And just got <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I spent two and a half hours in a car in that parking lot, and that dude never came back and got his truck. That's wow! Crazy. I was in the parking lot for two and a half hours, you know, partaking, doing whatever it was in the parking lot. 
Wow. And that dude never came back and got his truck. Yeah. He left that fucking waste management truck. And, you know, I tell that story now, and I said, man, what could have been? Because I could have been a damn millionaire. Yeah. yeah no, shit, seriously. Man. I don't know those waste management guys. Isn't that like the Sopranos and stuff? Those, <laughs> that's some probably, mafia stuff. Yeah, but still, it, it, around good point. Around Detroit at that time, they probably were. Yeah. It would have been a great but, way. It would have been a great way to start an angle with you and Duke the Dumpster. That's yes, great. dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> I did the that job is... to a waste management dumpster, yo. Okay, I yeah, uh, okay. Hey, I don't know. You know sold it, so. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, you I didn't have no choice to yeah. know sold it. I had a couple <laughs> of Hall of Famers wanting to blaze out here in the back. <laughs> what, what was I going to do? Right. I wasn't right. going to chase the guy. I was ready to I was ready to do the thing over here. I was what, what were the, after the dude takes off running and you get up and everything, <laughs> What is? what are they saying then? Uh, well, all of a sudden, hey, Cash, what are you doing over there? Come on, we're trying to smoke. What are you doing over there? <laughs> so they didn't even put over the fact that you got bashed in the head with a fucking dumpster? <laughs> uh, the only one that did was Pondo, and he was laughing his ass off. Oh, I thought man. Pondo was going to die. I man. thought Pondo was going to die. He's just like, oh, my God, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, what man. the hell? Tell everybody, uh, go, time to plug your stuff, whatever you want to plug, um, you know, social addresses, whatever. Man, look, man, anybody that wants to follow me, you can follow me. Uh, all my social medias are at Cashflow Wrestler. Um, you, I, got, I got my own YouTube channel that has a bunch of old matches and new cool. stuff and, and movie stuff. You know, of course, my IMDb is out there. I, I dabble in a little bit of acting. And cool. anybody yeah. out there that has uh, an Android phone. It's only on Android right now, but I have my own video game on Android. It's called oh. Cashflow's Chop Shop. Dude, oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, I ain't got no fucking Android, man. Okay, and explain that. Well, though, it, will be out on, it will be out on Apple and iOS soon. Uh, it's just taking a little longer to get it out on Apple. So what's but the it, concept it's really of the fun. game? What's the concept? Um, it, it's, it's pretty retro. It's uh, you're trading chops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I like it. It has characters. I'm the final boss. You uh, you start out. You're the player. Your name is Charlie Choplin, um, <laughs> and you're trying to take you're trying to take everybody's money, uh, and you got to get to cash flow, and you got to beat cash flow. You got to trade chops with cash flow. So you're the Mike Tyson of the Mike Tyson's punch out is what yeah. we're saying. And yeah. it's funny you say that because once you see the game, you'll be like, wow, I get it. It looks now. like that. That's it awesome, does, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. Seriously. We should have no, been talking about that. Exactly. I wish we would have known that earlier. That's on. super cool, dude. Yeah. Right, check it out. It's on Play Store, even if you don't have, you know, or if you do have an Android or whatever. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it'll be out on Apple soon. I just, I got to, you know, I'm working on getting that taken care of. Is it yeah. a is it a free download or is it a paid game? It's a, it, it's a free download. Of course, it does have in-app purchases. You can buy extra yeah. money in case somebody whoops your ass too much. Right, so. right. That's <laughs> smart. Yeah, I love that, bro. That's awesome, yeah, dude. That so great. you're you're now a Netflix star. You've got your own video game. Yeah. You've been wrestling for, what, 30 years almost now? So, dude, you're... 20, 27, 26, yeah. 27 years. Try not no, to I, age me too much, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. sorry, <laughs> sorry. Ooh, we don't want to round up too much there. But anyway, bro... You've had one hell of a career, man. That's awesome, yeah. bro. Well, I, I and honestly, Jimmy, you know, it's it's funny you say that, dude. I hope the best is yet to come. You know what I mean? Oh, I for still sure. have and, until my body gives out, dude, I still got it. And, you know, I, I hope the best is yet to come. Yeah, yeah man. Awesome. I think so. I think so. I'm yeah. happy for you, bro. Happy for you. Thank you, Wolfie. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah, and I appreciate you coming on for us here. A little bit of, little bit of last minute, but like we said, we wanted to, because uh, we love everybody up there, we uh, wanted to give a, an opportunity for somebody to come on and, and plug the show and talk about themselves. And like we said earlier, we got the guy we wanted, and uh, you didn't disappoint, brother. We appreciate it, man. <laughs> <laughs> much much love wolfie much love man and y'all don't don't forget to check it out september 13th this wednesday it's yep. called wrestlers it's gonna be good yeah we're Excited. looking forward to it so yeah. jimmy when we come back 
Are we coming back with Ask Wolfie D anything? Yeah, you know how it is, man. Ask Wolfie anything. Cash, it's it's always crazy over here, man. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Cash. Great. And no problem, man. Thanks for having me on there, bro. Yeah, all bro. right, brother. You have a good rest of your day, and we appreciate you. Thanks, Cash. All right, brother. I'll talk to you all soon. Okay, yeah, buddy. man. Good Bye. to talk to you again. All right. <laughs> See Absolutely, Jimmy. Absolutely. Right. DJ, hit the music. All right, we are back with Ask Wolfie D Anything and Wolfie D, man. Cash flow. I knew it was going to be a good episode, man, but honestly, that was yeah. really cool, man. I, we got to learn about reality TV, man. That's fun. <laughs> Do we, were we educated? I think so. I think so. I mean, the, the thing is, is can you just imagine... I mean, you know, because I, I feel like a lot of those shows that, especially the ones that my wife watched, like on Bravo and stuff, are super scripted, man. They just seem like they're so like, or maybe, you know, the people act a little more because they know they're on camera. You know, maybe it's not scripted per se, but maybe it's kind of like a co-opted agreement there. But man, this Netflix documentary, I'm I'm excited about it because I'm a big fan of that Last Chance You show, you know? Yeah. And, I think this is going to be cool because this is wrestlers. This is kind of yeah. like last chance wrestlers, you know, and yeah. or or first chance or whatever. You I know? don't know that I've told this, but as far as reality TV, me, Hammerjack, and this other dude uh, actually were hired uh, to do. You remember that show uh, about the my big fat something wedding, but it was a uh, oh, it was like the Middle Eastern folks, and they they would party, and the cops would get caught all the time. Yes, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I do, shows. yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah. So we were extras, but we we were security, but we couldn't let the the stars of the show know that we were security. We had to act like we were just there at this bar, chilling and hanging out together, drinking. So, because if they found out, they would have flipped out that the producers hired security, but they had to hire security because they were known for getting out of control in in their episodes, right? So, yeah, yeah we, we did that. So, uh, we were actually on that show. <laughs> Dude, okay, well, that was the exact first question. Dennis Stone on Twitter asks, Wolfie D, were you ever a part of anything like a reality show or did you have, have you ever done anything or had the opportunity to be in anything like that? That's crazy that you just said that. <laughs> it is crazy. And it, yeah, I, it's funny because we've told before, you don't tell me what the questions are ever. Right. Uh, but yeah, that one. And then I did, um, Joe Kenta. What was it? Uh, homicide hunter. There's an episode called Love Bites, I think is the name of the episode. Okay. I don't know what season it was, but I played a uh, a bouncer at a bar and yeah. actually had some speaking lines in it. Um, yeah, well, that was pretty cool. And, um, and then there was another show, and I'm actually, I think, because I don't know that I ever saw this one, but I filmed it, but um, I was a doorman at like a, underground card gambling ring and i was the door guy <laughs> i didn't have no uh no speaking in that one but i think that was on something called snapped killer couples possibly i, I it was it was one of those types of shows for what yeah they film a lot of those in Knoxville, right? Absolutely. Like yep. Yeah. Absolutely. What is it with that, man? It's crazy. Like so many people where I'm from in Virginia, it's like two hours away from Knoxville. Yeah. And some people that wanted to try to get an acting, they would go to Knoxville to work on these like true crime reenactment yeah. shows. They just, they just happen to do a lot of those in Knoxville, man. That's you know, crazy. Too, uh, how much it, you've heard them talk about how much it costs to, to do films in like California now and stuff. So a lot of the production companies have moved to like Georgia and Tennessee and Louisiana. And yeah. Got it. Yeah, dude, that's a trip. And you've also been, of course, in your buddy, Jonathan news video. I used yeah. to like me before we were Facebook friends, lamb chop, the lamb chop. Uh, dude, th uh, that is such a great song, man. And such a great video. Really gone tomorrow. Yeah. 
Dude, it's so trippy that that's called that. And, you know, obviously we've lost Joe. Every time I hear that song, I get sad, man. Sometimes it'll pop up. Like if I'm cutting the grass, it'll pop up on the shuffle on my phone. And I'm like, oh, I can't listen to this, man. This will, Yeah, because I just think about, dude, it was so cool. And, you know, Lamb Chop, that's what's funny is indie rock, like, a lot of the alternative like indie rock guys love wrestling. Like Bob Mold from Husker Du actually wrote a little bit for WCW. Lamb Chop. There's a band called the Mountain Goats. Obviously, me. I played some indie rock. <laughs> but I, oh, dude, we all love wrestling. It's crazy. I don't know. You know, you would almost think like because I, I I hate to say it, but like some of the alternative or like indie rock guys are a little bit what you would call snooty kind of yeah. hipster. But they love wrestling, man. I mean, Josephus yeah. actually turned the stadium in into mm-hmm. a place where hipsters came like yeah. you know they yeah. they would go to watch wrestling and then they would go to the bars you know and yeah. over in east nashville and dude i just think it's eh. but anyway long story short you getting into have you have you ever tried to push that further as far as getting more do, acting gigs uh, i wanted to always do stunt work man but that, that was something where you'd have to at the time when i wanted to pursue it California. You have to go to California. Yeah. 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 You have to go to a school, you know, unless you're the the rock or stone cold, you know, (laughs) right. You know, you can do your own stunts and everything. Right. And even they get stunt guys, you know what I mean? So it's, it's funny that, you know, I mean, I could have seen you doing some stunts for stone cold. Why not, man? But you know, the funny thing is too, is like, I could actually see you, you have the personality. You could do something that could actually, you know, I could see you doing some character work and stuff for sure. You know, just depends on. And also, um, I was going to be on season two of heels. Uh, yeah, me a spot and then right uh, last minute the budget cut i don't know if that's just a movie term to <laughs> we just cut your scene right like, i don't know but yeah, yeah that's what it was something about they cut the scene that i was gonna be you know. yeah like the script gets trimmed down and they're like okay we've yep. For time, we've got to cut this scene out because right. it just we can tell the story in a different. You know how it is in wrestling, man. Yeah. Things will happen, and then you get there, and they're scrapped because they don't have time, or somebody went too long in a match, and you got to right. cut yours down and stuff. But yeah, anyway, well, that's cool, man. It's so crazy. Like I said, I saved some questions to time it with with shows and stuff. But anyway, that was funny that you started to go into that before I even <laughs> asked the question. So we promise I don't even send him the questions, but no. anyway, all right. The second question we've got today, and this guy is one of our YouTube listeners, bargain hunter 2404, which by the way, we are starting to do this thing now that I'm releasing you know, we don't put all of our episodes on YouTube. So what I'm doing now is every Saturday, at least for the the rest of this year, we are going to be releasing shows from the archives. Some will be brand new. Some will be the very early stages. And I just am picking some of the better shows and we're going to put them on YouTube. Every Saturday morning, you can go on YouTube and listen to a new show. So if you haven't... Subscribe. Yeah, if you haven't, well, if you haven't heard them all and you prefer to listen on YouTube, go to YouTube, subscribe, follow, which it's funny. I don't know how you're hearing this <laughs> and you're you're never heard the shows. But anyway, <laughs> tell somebody if they only listen to shows on YouTube, they can go to YouTube now and hear our older shows. And sometimes I'll even drop a newer episode, too, just depending on where how it lands in the downloads before that. OK, so go check our YouTube out at Live Wolfie D. We're, we're putting new stuff on there all the time. So anyway, this one actually came from their Bargain Hunter 2404 from YouTube. And this one is kind of half a question, but also kind of, you know, part of a story, too. So you may not know this, but you wrestle at a cockfighting arena in Manchester, Kentucky. I do this know. was f- this you do know that? Yeah. <laughs> this was for SCW. The arena was the Phil Young Riverside Club. It was up on a big hill, and yep. before you go up the hill, you cross a river. You wrestled yep. a guy named Jamie Too Cool Stone. Yeah. Bill Dundee came in and Billy Travis wrestled him also on other shows. Do you remember this place? It's actually a, on YouTube. Before the wrestling started showing, there it was a cockfighting arena for years. After yep. the wrestling stopped showing there, it was opened back up several times times as a chicken fighting arena and was one of the biggest cockfighting pits. He loves saying cockfighting. I'm just, 
in the country until about three years ago. It is closed for good now. The owner of it was busted on a federal case, aiding what? along with several other pit owners in nearby counties. The match is Wolfie D versus Jamie Two Cool Stone. Look it up. Anyway, you get what I mean, but yeah, cockfighting. I've told you that story before. Cockfighting. About some of the, yeah. the places, <laughs> the places that we would end up at man yeah. some of the places that would run and i remember yeah it was a cockfighting arena and when they say cross a river that part i remember crossing over a, a creek but the it was like on a gravel road and then it was like i almost feel like it was just a piece of wood thrown across fucking <laughs> water you know i don't remember like an actual bridge bridge but i mean obviously we drove a car over it. not a like, drug like, bridge either not right? a drug bridge no yeah a yeah, little bitty uh, wooden type thing, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was up a hill, big red barn looking thing, and it was a it was a cockfighting arena. I remember that, dude. That have you beautiful. have you ever have you ever seen cockfighting? You've been in Mexico. I don't know if you ever. Got to see it. <laughs> no, never seen it live, unfortunately, bro. Okay, I was ten years <laughs> old. You too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was ten years old. My brother was eight years old, and I'm guessing maybe I was eleven. He was nine. Whatever. You get the point. Very young. Okay. And my cousin, who was into some criminal activities back in the day, he actually had a rooster that he would fight local guys. And this is in the back hills of Southwest Virginia. Southwest. Virginia, not mm. Southwest Virginia. You get what I'm saying. The southwestern part of Virginia, anyway, yes. back hills, Appalachia, hillbilly stuff, man. And mm. we were growing up, and I remember my other cousin who we would stay with. He was a big wrestling fan too. He was like, "Hey, uh, you know, our cousin, he's got a he's got a rooster. He's going to fight tonight with this guy." And we were like, "What?" And we go, and they're in this little like barn type area obviously and there's probably like probably like 30 40 people there they were bet i remember money liquor and we were like 10 and nine eight years old and dude it was crazy because i mean it was moonshine probably is what it was but anyway there was these two roosters and they went at it man and it was just feathers flying blood everywhere dude it was a trip and it we were considered like city kids compared to where we were. You know, oh, we went yeah. we went to the hills for the summer, but we would yeah. come back to the city or town or whatever. And dude, it was a trip for us, man. We were like, "What the heck did we just watch?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some crazy stuff. I don't know about live. But I've, I've seen clips of it on YouTube. But... Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. amazing that uh, they're saying that it shut down just three years ago. <laughs> right. I know. I, know we're, I mean, has it been PETA has just not been paying attention or something? You know well, what I'm I mean? telling you, it's not easy to find. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, and that leads us to this third question, which actually is perfect since we're coming out of that question is Jeff Jefferson from Instagram asked this question. He says, what is the craziest place you've ever wrestled in? Okay, so yeah, as far as uh, I mean, that's a pretty crazy one. Of, you know, a cockfighting arena. I don't know that everybody <laughs> one of those before. Uh, and but then also what we talked about earlier, man, the juggalo thing was crazy, man. I mean, you got these acres of people just hammered out of their minds and but walk around naked with ma- clown faces and yeah, it's yeah. a pretty trippy thing, man. You go into the ring that time of night and yeah. I, I swear to God, every wrestler on the planet was booked, and that was the same night that Tia Tequila got uh, right. The fans started throwing rocks and shit at her or some shit. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. But I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So that that might have to be it, man. I mean, I can't think of a. You know, I've heard uh, some guys that wrestled in Memphis. You know, they would wrestle at the prisons and stuff. I've never done that. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. And, and don't think I'd want to, not because I scared. I'd just be afraid they'd keep me. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a nightmare. Um, a right. Nightmares. No, uh, you're not going anywhere, buddy. We know who you are. <laughs> we just looked you up. Yeah. <laughs> or they just mistake you for an inmate. That would yeah, be horrible. I'm, people are in prison for shit they didn't do, bro. A lot of them. Yeah. That's a fucking. Can you imagine? Oh, going bro. to prison for something you didn't fucking do, like straight up you didn't fucking do it. Wow. I mean, and and how you could be like calm and try to deal with it because the more you would escalate it, the worse it would be. Oh you yeah. Know? Oh yeah. 
you're that just seems like a weird, horrible punishment that it's just like, uh, is this like a, is this, are, are you telling me something, God? You know, yeah, like, yeah. Seriously. And it's true. It happens every day. And you guarantee, I don't know what the percentage is, but I guarantee there's a good small, I mean, maybe not a large percentage, but yeah. a good percentage of people in there for no reason. You yeah. Know? And you and know, what? I, you have know. A, I have a feeling there's people on this planet that being put in a juggalo uh, event like that would be the same sort of nightmare, you know? <laughs> yeah. You go yeah. Hey, take some uh, good Christian folk that ain't been out of fucking Somerset or something like right, that. Right, right. <laughs> and plant yeah. them in the middle of that shit. Um, they would think they're in hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is this? I mean, from what I understand, and I watch a little of those documentaries that people, you know, they make footage from when they go to those. They yeah. seem like decent enough people to where yeah. they're, you know, yeah. but you, you know, what is it they say? There's like a percentage, like one in so many people are psychopaths. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, so you got to say, well, there's probably what several thousand people here, <laughs> 10,000, whatever, you know, I but I don't know what the numbers were, but it was a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of people and they are having fun and, you know, whoop, whoop and all that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Anyway, well, that's, you know, that's all the questions I got for today on Ask Wolfie D anything. So good, good questions. Uh, hopefully I gave you some good answers, but yeah, appreciate uh, OVW, Al Snow, Cash Flow. Look at me go. Yeah. Dang, just awesome. trash, flash and slash. <laughs> <laughs> You're I back can't. to your rapid days. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. It's in my blood. No, uh, <laughs> but we appreciate you guys listening uh, as usual. And if uh, everything goes to p as planned next week, we're probably going to keep rhyming. So uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Tune in next week, guys. Thank you. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling. The podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics, to superstar interviews, to action figure expertise. This team does it all, and all they ask is, give me back my pro wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at GeneJacksonPod.com. That's right, it's the Talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, booty call on Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah. This is the big picture, Michael Jablonski. Don't forget to tune in every week to Jablonski's Pissed Off on the Mike Jablonski's Pissed Off YouTube channel. The Unbrawl, Clint is smart. He's gonna tell you all about it. He doesn't care what you think. You're gonna hear all about it. Mike Jablonski. Hey everyone, this is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you are interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M-THEMAN73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World.
So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. I got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. He got a cap for you, don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still loving it, color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap, I'm like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD, and I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Lay low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be real. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. All the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You second step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When my finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. Then I'm driving it home, it's Ruby D, baby. Huh, I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. This has been a James Rock Street production.